Hello, this is Corpus Corax and I will show you in this tutorial video how to set up software in the loop simulation with Xplane and how to fly navigate it. So we start with setting up the GCS with a fresh configuration. We select the developer mode and that's just a preset for the widgets, how they are displayed. And I'll show you which configuration options to set. First we need the telemetry connection, so that would be a connection to localhost, port 9000 with UDP. And for Xplane we need the Xplane HITL widget. Remote host will be localhost as well. The ports are correct, but we need to specify which data we want. We need attitude raw, we need attitude actual, we need ground truth, and we want to have GPS data as well as airspeed. All at 10 milliseconds except GPS, which is usually uh, updated at 15 milliseconds. We will use the hardware in the loop tab. Software in the loop is uh, identical to hardware in the loop except that we do not use a real board but actually the uh, uh, simulation software for the firmware. But as far as the GCS is concerned, that's the same thing. What we need here is add a few more widgets that are not in there by default, like a primary flight display the system health and for good measure the UAV object browser. Now we start the uh, Symposix firmware. You see the LED blinking, so we can connect via UDP. At this point it uh, complains about uh, version mismatch, that's because uh, with this revision of the Symposix there is no fake version revisions there out there yet. That will be fixed in a later version. Now we need to update some configuration. Since we fly a fixed wing we need to tell it that it is a fixed wing. We are not allowed to apply this without assigning some fake channels, so that's what I'm going to do. They don't matter because since we fly with a flight simulator, the output channels are not used. And we need to update stabilization. Since it's a fixed wing, we need to have integral data. We just copy the proportional coefficients in the integral coefficients. And we update the integral limits to almost the full width of the servo. That basically allows us to have automated trim. In Xplane itself, we select a nice uh, remote control plane with a little bit of range. In network connection, correction. In uh, data input output, you select these uh, data transfer settings according to the wiki page. And in the network connections, it's important to have the port to the same one as in the GCS at 49000. And in the advanced tab, the uh, IP of the remote system to 127.003 at 6756. And if we have that, we can uh, connect to explain. That doesn't always work on the first try. It sometimes fails to connect, so we just say stop and start again until both tabs are green. Then the next thing is we need to manually edit some settings. We have the uh, we want to fly with the autopilot, which is the fixed wing path follower, but that's not enabled by default. So we need to enable it here. then store this on disk. Now I'm uh, checking whether it has actually been stored. I'm sending disabled to the UAV. 
now load and it gets back to enable so I know for sure that it actually has been saved and I need to power cycle the board which in this case works by just ending the process and starting it again the GCS reconnects we reconnect the flight simulator and we're basically ready to fly so this is what the plane looks like we go into GCS control the arm we go into stabilized mode set select pitch slightly up make sure the parking brakes are not applied in X-plane and yank up the throttle that's take off in stabilized mode you don't want to fly too far away from the can manually fly it in stabilized mode with these controls but we want the autopilot so I'm putting it into position hold for now there's some settings here with the autopilot that have to be adjusted currently it flies too slow for this plane so we need to go to the fixed wing path follower settings and select speeds that are appropriate for the climb which in this case would be a best climb rate speed of 20 meters per second a cruise speed of 30 meters per second and a maximum airspeed of 50 meters per second we send this and save it which makes the autopilot fly more safely we wait until the alarms go away which would indicate an unsafe flight situation it was still flying too slow and now we are able to set up some waypoints in the flight data we have the plane still displayed as a quad but that doesn't matter for us flying over the airfield the GCS co GPS coordinates come from the flight simulator so this is where it actually flies around in X-plane as well zoom out a little bit so I can show you that So now we would add a couple of waypoints. We start with one waypoint that we use as to set up the defaults. Let's put that close to the home position because it will also be the fallback waypoint for if anything goes wrong. We want a altitude of 300 meters and we want a velocity to fly at 20 meters per second fly mode for all our waypoints we will have to fly vector and an end condition of lagoon mean of 0.1 which basically means at 90% of the distance covered select the next leg so we have a smooth transition and no overshoot now we can paint a nice flight path by just adding more waypoints with control A it will automatically copy the settings from the previous waypoint for any new ones. So let's put one here, let's put one here, let's put one here. Let's put one here, let's put one here, and let's put one here. That should be enough. Let's put in a little bit more. Now the first waypoint is a little bit special since as you can see with the red lines it's the fall back away point if anything goes wrong it will come back to here so for this one we want a different mode we want it to fly directly there and the end condition would not be like you mean because it doesn't apply but a distance to target of 20 meters the waypoint is considered reached if the plane is within 20 meters of the waypoint Last but not least, we need to upload the waypoints to the fake URV to the same process, which we do by send to URV in the path planner.
currently our plane is still cycling here here in the UAV trail where we put it in position hold so what I will do now is setting the half planner mode and it will fly to the first waypoint when it is reaches uh, within 20 meters it will fly towards the second one turns around and will fly along our wave path let's watch that in here This is where it circled before, and this is the new path over the right edge of the runway. It covered about 50% of the first leg. And it will now uh, consider the next waypoint as reached and soon switch to the next one. That's the case now. It starts a smooth transition. You see there's a little bit of overshoot which is now corrected and it's on the next trip leg. plane has issues with the graphical details. Next waypoint is reached, makes a right turn to waypoint number four. Is considered reached. This waypoint is five. In the meantime, we go and have a look. We can see that the altitude is actually a little bit too high. It's at 340 meters when we select it to fly at 300. That indicates that we might want to adjust the path follower uh, settings. Currently, the coefficient to correct the uh, vertical position is at only 5 centimeters per second vertical speed for each meter arrow, which is not a lot. So let's make that 20 centimeters per second speed for each meter and send this, and it should now more aggressively correct the altitude which it does it immediately goes into a slight descent and approaches the 300 meters that we wanted
Meanwhile, we are one leg further and are now parallel to the runway, flying back to the second to last waypoint. We again watch this in the map. Beautiful. Now to spice this up a little bit, X-Plane doesn't have to fly in beautiful to nice weather all the time. We can change the environment and add a little bit of thunderstorm and a little bit of turbulence. Which means that the autopilot actually has to do something. As you see it's fighting with a little bit of side wind. and it's probably going up and down a tiny little bit. Marginally so. If you watch this on the map, it should be not noticeable. However, we can see slight deviations on the artificial horizon that the autopilot is fighting the wind. If the situation gets worse, let's add more turbulence, more storm, then it can happen that the autopilot goes into the error situation which will force us to go to the emergency waypoint which by the looks of it just happened it turned left fly back to home for that it was enough that the guidance arrow turned on for a split second when the heavy turbulence hit the first time. That was enough to make it deem the situation no longer safe to fly, so it comes back. Since currently everything is back into the green, it will now probably uh, go back into a regular waypoint pattern and fly the same path again, this time with heavy turbulence. You can select any random waypoint as error destinations. You can also select the same waypoint that would be the next waypoint anyway, or to disable this feature. In this case, the plane would follow the waypoints and the flight path no matter what. If, for example, the engine should fail, it would not be able to hold its altitude and just glide to the ground. Look at this, despite the heavy turbulence, we are now back parallel to the runway flying to waypoint number two. This concludes this little video and I'm stopping the recording now because if you want to play around with that you can do that yourself.